NCTV 45, The Train, anytime on your time. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. Welcome everyone to the Cedar Sports Corner. I'm Alex Laverson and with me as always is our producer, Mr. Angelo Parada. And uh, Angelo, Go Maryland! Go Maryland, right? A very, uh, a, a very mixed bag of uh, emotions for me personally this weekend in regards to sports. Uh, the Steelers lost. Uh, I was bummed Notre Dame lost, but um, hey, Pitt with the upset over Central Florida, and you called. You said that they were a pretty decent team, and they'd bounce back. Um, no, Angelo. I'm wondering if Pat Narduzzi redeemed himself because the week before they lost to Penn State off of a very controversial call at the end. But seven points weekend, does not make a game. Let me explain. Okay, you have the Irish that lost a, a very good football game to. Uh, a, a very good football team in Georgia, and I'm not taking anything away from Notre Dame. Notre Dame went from 7 to 10. Now, it wasn't like Notre Dame lost to Union's Pop Warner, yeah, second the team. Top tier okay. Program. So, <coughs> when you actually. <coughs> Excuse me, take a look. Okay. My feeling is that maybe even Notre Dame shouldn't even moved from their seventh spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because I don't think there was another game that pitted somebody big against somebody big. Mm -hmm. you, do you understand what I mean? Well, a lot. We, now, we talk. why did I say go Maryland? Because you're playing <coughs> against Penn State. And there, it's at Maryland. And you know what? Penn State is a sheep in wolf's clothing. They're going to get caught. Pitt actually played a better game than Penn State. You had a missed. You had a free and game. if they say seven points is home field advantage, Notre Dame and Pitt actually played a very admirable game. Well, and, and that was the thing uh, with the Pitt Penn State game. I thought Pitt did outplay Penn State for the most part, but uh, you know, Kessman missed that field goal with the one yard line, and also there's that a lot of people didn't like the fact that they went for the field goal. They should have went for the touchdown there, and I agree. And I think though Narduzzi actually redeemed himself because he was basically in the same situation this past week against Central Florida. Fourth down, um, and they called, called a play called the Pitt Special, which is originally dubbed the Philly Special. So they called this very aggressive, innovative trick play to score and win the game. Now Pitt, I'll tell you what, they've had, they've played a pretty tough schedule so far. Uh, they the first game against ranked Virginia, who's a good team, who's probably going to win the ACC Coastal, and then Penn State and Central Florida. And of course, you know, you've got you know, your two cupcake schools. Now you have a program like Penn State, who's generally known to load up on cupcakes, and they're ranked number 12. Yeah, I mean, so again, I'm not like trying to like necessarily 
a diss on Penn State or anything. It's just that uh, Pitt recently has been getting blasted for you know over scheduling their non-conference games, and a lot of fans and alumni want them to schedule these cupcakes. Well, you know, I've got one thing to say. Yes, Virginia. Uh, as I look, I'm wondering where my chair went. Yes, Virginia. There is a Notre Dame, and Virginia goes to Notre Dame this week. That's going to be a that's. And um, I think Virginia has a problem because mm -hmm. Notre Dame will have a chip on its shoulder. Can Notre Dame get back into national title contention if they run the table? Yeah, I think they should be able to, um, because and and here's here's exactly why. When you look at the standings. Okay, even uh, if you go to the rankings, what you're going to have is somebody's got to play somebody. And this is the big conference thing. When you have Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, Georgia and Alabama have to play. And you can't keep them. Clemson... I see them having trouble in the ACC. They're going to drop a game. Mm -hmm. Okay, LSU, they have to play Auburn. Ohio State has to play Wisconsin. Wisconsin's on fire. Okay, Florida, another SEC team in that mix. Okay, so what you're looking at is Oklahoma, who doesn't have a rival up there um, except maybe for Texas if Texas comes along and steps challenge. up challenge right yeah I know okay so yeah as long as they don't do all you know you lost the game we'll move you a half inch down the column and double space the page you know, uh, what's the rest of the schedule for Notre Dame look like? If they the, the rest of the schedule for Notre Dame is not real difficult, not real easy. In that the Irish ha have USC coming in, okay. So <coughs> Bowling Green State University, they win. USC, Michigan, that's like. USC, Michigan, and Virginia Tech are the triple back-to-backs. And I'll tell you, Michigan, under Jim Harbaugh, they've been, his tenure there, he hasn't really beaten many top-ranked teams. He's struggling, and so, the you, you know, keep in mind, Notre Dame's everybody's Super Bowl. Okay, then you go at Duke, which is going to be interesting. Navy... The last two games where you have Boston College and Stanford, I tend to be... Boston College is going to be at Notre Dame, and Stanford will always give the Irish a game. So if Notre Dame plays up like the team that they're ranked, like the 10th ranked team... It plays yeah, like they, they played should, against they Georgia. Should. Yeah, they should have a shot to get in the final four. Yeah. I think we should take Was a break, and maybe next segment, you know, I'll dive a little bit more into Pitt From uh, Cedars football. Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars, featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. If you're craving hot dogs and more, and you're in the area, then look no farther than Coney Island, downtown Newcastle, on Kennedy Square. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars, featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. And welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. Um, like I said before break, I'm going to go over Pitt Panther football a little bit more here. Um, so right now they're 2-2. Two and two, And they've got a, you know, a should-win game against Delaware. 
Now, anyone that knows Pitt, Pitt is the most unpredictably predictable program in college football. They could beat the number one two or team, number one team or two team in the country, and lose next week to a school like Delaware. So I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think that happens. I think they'll beat Delaware if they have Duke. They're at Duke and at Syracuse after, and then they're back home at Miami. And then they go away again to Georgia Tech. The yeah. last part of the schedule was the biggest problem for Pitt. Because mm -hmm. the Miami, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Virginia Tech, that's the four in a row where you really have to be disciplined to pull it off. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, no matter how bad North Carolina is, Narduzzi and Pitt just doesn't, they just can't seem to beat them for whatever odd reason. So if they can, listen, if they can get to seven, eight wins somehow, um, that's all, I, I think they should, you know, if they're as good as, you know. What if Virginia loses a game or two? Well, Does then, Pitt automatically take over the, the Coastal? The well, again, they should because the Coastal isn't, other than Virginia, the Coastal isn't that good. So Pitt should, Pitt has more talent than I think the rest of the Coastal does. So when you look at, at, at Virginia, they're at Miami after Notre Dame. They're at Louisville, who played a very doggone good game. And they have Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. I say Pitt has still an excellent shot to win the Coastal. I think so, too. Look, even if they don't win the Coastal, I'll be happy if they could get to seven or eight wins and, you know, win a bowl game. Uh, for Narduzzi, Narduzzi has done a good job at Pitt his five years there, for the most part. Um, I think any Pitt fan after Paul Chris left, if they were told the next Pitt coach would go uh, at 30 and 26 with the win over Penn State and wins over number two Miami, number two Clemson, winning the ACC Coastal. Uh, I think they'd be pretty happy. And I'll tell you what, Narduzzi does get a lot of flack for, you know, allowing some questionable play calls. And I think that criticism, you know, is justified. But give him this, he does get his kids to play their butts off. So uh, I'll be happy if they can get seven or eight wins. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. Does anybody, the secretary, the janitor, does anybody get fired from the Pirates? I hope. I don't. I, I hope After so. After 66 and 91, which 50 of those games came before the All-Star break. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. I mean, I, I just, I'm just kind of indifferent. I just know how that organization works. Well, there's only one team in the whole thing, the Marlins, in the whole National League worse than you. Okay, the Marlins and the Tigers. Marlins, Tigers, and Orioles. Everybody else is better than the Pirates. Uh, that's nothing really I mean, important to us. When you're four from the bottom... I think it's time to give it a break. And, uh, you know, I just want to see who the Pirates are going to hold responsible because I think it's absolutely a bunch of crap that you can't win baseball games. You're at the All-Star break. You're right in the thick of things. And... Then all of a sudden, you don't win a game in July? I mean, who really does that? The Pirates. But, you know, hey, uh, hockey's coming up soon. And you know what? I was I, I would say at least we speaking, have the Steelers. But, uh, speaking of hockey, one in three pens. Now, it is only preseason. Are they going to be able to get it together? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you still... Now, well, I'm not the most, you know... 
regular season hockey, regular but, season begins against the Sabres on the third and then they have the Blue Jackets after that point if they can jump off to a very positive October then I think the Pens they need to be positive and healthy I think they're going to be all right. I think they're, I think they're going to be really good this year. Um, we should probably take a break, and when we come back for our third segment, uh, I, the I think we do need to talk about those Steelers. This program furnished by the Mad Unit, Mobile Auto Detailing. See Michael Sad at the MadUnit dot com. Holy snowman! It's the Turf Bar. Home of great sandwiches, appetizers, tacos, you name it, they have it at the Turf Bar. It's just the right food you'll enjoy. Those special drinks, they're there too. And get that nice cold beverage, relax, enjoy the Turf Bar. If you ain't there, you should be. Hello, friends. Pinella Brothers, 1701 Hamilton Street, provided funding for this program. Great food and drink, Pinella Brothers. Welcome back to our third and final segment of the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody. And, uh, yeah, eventually it's time to talk about those Steelers. And, you know, this is, obviously Steeler fans are disappointed. I don't think many people saw them going 0-3. Of course, Ben is out for the year. Uh, Mason Rudolph at the helm. Rudolph did all right his first game coming in. Um, a decent second half against the Seahawks. Last game, uh, you know. Um, now, there's a lot of... Steelers are getting a lot of flack about being aggressive with the trades. Um, they traded their first overall pick for next year's draft for Minka Fitzpatrick, who is a high, is obviously a high caliber defensive back. Now, last night they traded away a fifth round pick um, for next year's draft for the name slipping me, Vincent Davis, if that's his name, a uh, tight end from Seahawks who hasn't really done much as a free agent after now, this year. Now, let, let me tell you. I never go, okay, Deion Sanders, you're right. However, Deion Sanders made some very good picks. Um, Nick Bennett. From the you team. have Big Ben out. That speaks volumes. You don't... Uh, Juju doesn't know if he's a number one or number two receiver. And you lost your number one receiver for very good reason, but nevertheless, you lost. You don't have a running back. The Steelers, I hate to say this, they're just a mirror image of what they used to be. 29th overall in offense and 30th in defense. So this week... I'm watching your team, the Browns, take on Baltimore. <laughs> They're not my team. But what's bother, what I think is bothering a lot of Steeler fans is why are they all of a sudden being uncharacteristically aggressive with trades on a season that seems pretty much lost? Because they're 0-3. Ben's not coming back this year. I don't think many people expect Mason Rudolph to pick up the slack and lead them to the playoffs. It could, they might see it as a weak division. Here's the thing. While your Cleveland Browns <laughs> are good, they are not invincible. What? Well, they're one and two, aren't they? So Baltimore is not that great. And the Bungles well, are bungling. So when you look at can you win the AFC North, two and one, Baltimore loses, you've got two and two and two and two. 
and you've got a one and three Pittsburgh team. Well, I'll tell you what. So I mean, you are in pretty decent. I mean, um, I compared like to what the Ocean? Well, no, I mean, they're not. I mean, they're two and one. You know, I like Lamar Jackson for the most part. Um, the Chiefs. Who would you pick on Baltimore to be on your fantasy team? Maybe Lamar Jackson. I don't really have any good quarterbacks in a couple of my leagues. But look, I, I understand. You're saying they're not as good as yeah, the two and one record indicates. Because I know they beat the Dolphins. Okay, um, now there's a big win. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, I understand. You Union know. beat the Dolphins. But I'll tell you what. <coughs> maybe maybe the Deuce. Maybe the Steelers do see this as like a weak division. I just the way they're playing. Oh man, I just. How would you like to be in the AFC East, where you're either three and zero or zero and three? So what what it's looking like in the AFC is you've got a chance in the North and the South to win. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. So what are the Super Bowl? What are the Super Bowl? Who's the who Vegas? predicts that win the Super Bowl this year now that Antonio Brown is released by the Patriots. The Patriots still. So it kind of shows that it was kind of like why didn't we well, even pick him up? You know? To scout the Steelers. Uh, well I mean they only had him for a week. Um, no, that's then, all they needed. They only played him one game. Well I mean after Brown's recent Twitter tantrums and a lot of the controversial things um, Brown said I sort of, I think his career's over. Um, he re-enrolled into Central Michigan, and man, he well, gave up like thirty million dollars from this master plan or ever with the Raiders to get to the Patriots, and now he's of course Gosh. Robert Kraft. Their source Robert Kraft isn't even going to pay him, uh, so to almost like nothing, you know, it, man, what he was in a position to make some money, and boom. He just really messed himself out of his career. Let's go, Browns. Ah, uh, no. Uh, you, you're a Ravens fan. No, I'm a Steelers fan. But let's. So I you're. Think, wait, wait. Who are you gonna be for? The Browns or the Ravens? Let's clear this up. Neither. I'm hoping that. Uh, They're playing. I don't want. I I hope they end in a tie. For all I care. I hope That's the canceled. worst thing that could happen for the Steelers. Well, then I hope the game gets canceled, or I hope they just. No, you gotta have the Browns win. Uh, well, okay, fine. I guess from a from a standpoint of the Steelers moving up the division, fine. But the point I was trying to—I just hate both of those teams so much. Well, you, you gotta do what you do for the team. And I, I, I guess, like, I—I I know you're looking at it like the Steelers. You know, could find the, move their way up in the division if the uh, Browns win. I, I just, well, how I like else would you over. look at it? I think the season's over. I think at the po- the points moot, honestly. But anyway, I think that uh, pretty much does it. Any last words, Angela? It's time to put up your Dukes as the Dukes go up against New Hampshire. Take it on the Bears. Mm-hmm. Well, like as I usually say at the end of our shows, go Penn State, Shenango, Athletics. Um, also, Pitt Volleyball is doing pretty well, but, uh, you know, let's go Pitt, and hopefully they can end their year out getting to a bowl game and winning, and I'll be happy.